Today, we're looking at ways that you can write faster MATLAB code. This means we're going to decrease that program runtime and increase the overall efficiency of any of your scripts. Now, this builds off of one of MathWorks LinkedIn posts, and I'm adding in a few things that I've seen over the years as well. The first step towards knowing how efficient your code can be or currently is, is understanding how much time it currently takes to run your code. And to do this, MATLAB has two functions set up. It is the tick and the talk commands. All right, and these work in tandem. Tick will start a timer and talk will end that timer and output the amount of elapsed time. If we run this, we'll see in the command window, there is our elapsed time of 0.007 seconds just to display hello world in the command window. We can also save the elapsed time as a variable as long as we call talk with an equal sign here and just give it a variable name. Here it's just define x timer, which will output the amount of time that has elapsed for defining x and printing it. And here, not much different and kind of what you'd expect. And you simply save that value as a variable. A final approach you can take is actually creating multiple timers. I have two defined here and each timer times a different task. So to do this, you'll define the process name. Here I've defined whole task for my initial tick. And then I need to close this right down here using talk, and I call that task name or that process name here. And then I save that time as the whole task time. I'm doing this also with a subtask. I call tick again with subtask, and then I end that with talk subtask and I save that value to subtask time. All I'm doing in here is doing a for loop that simply adds the previous value of the array plus five and saves it to the current value. And then I do have a one second pause included right here just to emphasize the point that we're timing two different things. And if we run this, it'll take a little over a second to actually operate and we'll get the subtask time here is 2.5 so that's the time it took to run just this section and then the whole task time is the entire section my laptop's running a bit slow right now as i record things but you should see much quicker times to do a simple for loop on your system tip number two is using the profiler built-in app for a deeper timing analysis now this example is straight off of matlab's website and their documentation for using the profiler app what they do is they define this function here called the solve lotka function and they also define a calculate peaks function now i've done this in separate.m files i'm just showing you the actual code it takes right here and to use the profiler app you can access it a few ways in the toolbar if you go home and then click run and time that's one way in the editor you have the profiler button and then in apps, you have the profiler icon. This should all open up the same page. When the profiler opens, you can insert commands that you want to time here in the top right, and then you'll click the run and time button. MATLAB will then run this code and time each individual subtask that is performed and give you a detailed report. Here in blue, we see these are actual user-defined functions that were timed. And then in the gray are things that MATLAB is running in the background. The next thing you should do is begin pre-allocating space for large arrays and matrices. What we mean by that is simply define the array as a bunch of zeros if you know the size of it ahead of time. And let me show you the difference this makes in your code. Here I'm timing the first process using that tick and talk version where I can time a subtask. So here I'm saving the P1 time. And in this example, I'm using no preallocation. So I'm just defining X as zero, running through this loop and then calculating the new value of X every single time. And I'm adding on elements in the array every single time. That is a computationally slow task to perform because the memory management system has to keep adding on every time we add a new value in X. This is going to be slow. If we do pre-allocate the X variable, we'll actually be a lot faster. Now to do this, we need to know the size of X ahead of time. 
and then we need to initialize x as a matrix or array here of all zeros of that same size that we're expecting. And now when we go through, we're just replacing individual values as opposed to also expanding the size of this variable in memory every loop. And here I'm saving this as P2 time. I'm also doing a how much times faster comparison. P1 will be a slow time, maybe 10 seconds. And then P2 should be a faster time, like five seconds. And we'll know that it's about twice as fast if that's the case. We can go ahead and run this code. And we'll see that the first process took about three seconds. And the second process only took 0.35 seconds. So we're about eight times, nine times as fast using that pre-allocated array. Tip number four is vectorizing your code. What this means is using MATLAB's vector functions that already exist, rather than using for loops or other complicated way to manipulate numbers. Our goal here is to multiply two random integers together and do this many times. How many times? Right now we'll do it 200 times. And let's go and just do a for loop to solve this problem. Now I've pre-allocated my for loops vowels. Okay, this is where the answers will be stored of the multiplication of two random values. Now the way Randy works, it generates a single value from one to 100, and I'm asking it only to generate one value. So this will be a random value zero to 100. This will be a random value zero to 100. Together, that'll add a new value in this for loop vowels array. And then I'm looping over this entire thing and doing it 200 times. And then we're simply logging the elapsed time for that process. We can also replace this entire for loop section with one line of code here. And we store it in the vectorized vowels section. Instead of generating just one value from one to 100, I'm generating a one by 200 array of those random values and using dot multiplication to multiply it by another array of one by 200 values going from one to 100. You can see how this simplifies the code just in purely the number of lines it takes, but it's also going to be much faster. And I'm saving the elapsed time and vectorized time. Once again, I'm gonna calculate how many times faster this code is if we go ahead and run this, we'll see we're getting about three and a half times faster right here. Now, if we increase the number of vowels, the number of loops that we're doing or numbers that we're multiplying together, right now it's 200. Let's increase this to, I don't know, close to 2 million and run this again. And now we see that we're about 52, 53 times faster with that vectorized code. This should begin to you know, trigger in your mind, the larger the data sets and the information you work with, the more valuable these time speed ups will be. In this last section, this is a super, super easy way to speed up your code. I hope you're not doing this, but remove any outputs you're doing to the command window that are involved in for loops or are repeated in any way. Especially with the display command or unsuppressed commands like this, anything you're sending to the command window will slow you down. So here I've got a for loop that's going to run 4,000 times. I'm defining P to be zero, and then I'm simply adding one to the previous value of P every loop and resaving that as P. In this code though, I've unsuppressed this line. So we're going to get an output every time. And then in the following code bit, I've suppressed that output so that we don't end up with the outputs in the command window. Again, it's fine to display final results at the end of your loops or anything that's important, but when you're running these loops themselves, try to suppress outputs from within that. If we go ahead and run this, we'll see that the time with outputting is over a second, and yet when we don't output stuff, we're getting in the two thousandths of seconds to actually run this. So this is a major speed up as well. I wanna leave you with a few final notes. As we saw before, those time savings increase drastically when you're handling large arrays. It might be exponential, I'm not quite sure on the time complexity of these things, uh, but it becomes more and more important. 
Again, pay attention to your code efficiency. When you're starting to write longer scripts, building these habits now, it's when you're handling bigger data, your efficiency is going to shine through. Also, I know you're going to need to make your own MATLAB functions, but look around for any built-in functions that MATLAB already has. Chances are these will be faster. They're already optimized by MATLAB's team. They know what they're doing. This is going to save you a lot of time in your scripts. And then lastly, when you're doing intensive for loop operations, I didn't show it in this video, but you can switch to using a par for loop over the standard for loop. Now this is a parallelized for loop that will use however many cores are in your computer. I think this requires a whole nother video to take a look at it, but just keep that in mind. If you've got a lot going on in a for loop, consider doing parallel coding approaches. And I also want to show you it's a little fun teaser here. I have done this before. Just copy code that you want to run and drop it into chat GPT. Let's take this code snippet. That is the unvectorized form. It's the for loop version of calculating those two random integers together and drop it into chat GPT. If you've never used chat GPT before, it is a large language model that takes in human speech as an input and will try its best to answer any questions that you have. I'm not saying this is a perfect tool, but as we can see here, I'm asking it to write me more efficient MATLAB code. I'm literally just going to paste in that code we had from earlier and see what it does with it. So it's saying it's got an idea. It says to use vectorization. Awesome. And it's giving me a one liner right here that I did exactly in my code that I also checked this before I made the video. Yes. And I'm glad that my idea was the same as chat GPT's. Again, this is just a fun way. You never know what you're going to find. It might give you wrong answers. It might give you some ideas. MATLAB also has documentation on all this stuff. So definitely use other resources beyond this video to find better ways to improve your code efficiency. Thank you for watching this quick video on making faster MATLAB code. If you've got other ideas, please throw them in the comments below. I'd love to see some of the ideas you guys have. And of course, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share this with a colleague that could use a little nudge in the right direction on their code performance. Have a great day.